Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. At Mayo Clinic, doctors who specialize in nose and sinus problems, they're called rhinologists. They treat people with nasal polyps, chronic sinusitis, tumors at the base of the skull, among a lot of other things. They're not just nose doctors. But there is one disease or a condition that they treat that I bet most people haven't heard of, including, well, including me. How about you? Nope, never heard of it. <laughs> it's called Samter's Triad. And here to tell us about it is the division chair of rhinology at Mayo Clinic, Dr. Erin O'Brien. It's great to have you back to the program. Thanks for having me again. So Samter's Triad, it's something new. I don't remember learning about this <laughs> when I went through medical school. Uh Something recent? Something I feel like new? it should be a hashtag. Hashtag Samter's triad. Yeah. So it's not new. Dr. Samter described it in 1968, but we have a new name for it that better describes what it is. And so the name we use now is aspirin exacerbated respiratory disease, which is a mouthful. Yeah. So the abbreviation is AERD. So what are the... Uh, what are the symptoms, and, wh- and what does all that stand for? So as described by Dr. Samter in the 60s, and we still use the same criteria, this is someone who has bad asthma, nasal polyps, and then they react to aspirin or ibuprofen. And the reaction is they can take an ibuprofen or take an aspirin, and all of a sudden their asthma will flare, or their nose will get stuffy, or their eyes will water and get puffy. And it's not that the aspirin causes the disease. It's that taking that medication makes your symptoms worse. It seems like it's an allergy response. It would seem like it, but it's not allergic. And so that's a little bit different than we think of your allergies to cats or dogs or dust. For these people, they typically say they never had any trouble until they were in maybe their 30s or 40s. And all of a sudden they notice their nose is stuffy. Then they can't smell as well. They can't breathe through their nose. Then they get diagnosed with asthma, which is new to them. And that may go on for a couple of years, and all of a sudden, where previously they could take an aspirin or ibuprofen and not have any trouble, all of a sudden they take one and they have a horrible asthma attack or their nose gets stuffy. And for some of them, they end up in the emergency department or they have a really bad reaction, whereas it never caused trouble before. Hmm. So it's a new disease that they were fine, and then all of a sudden now they have it. Interesting that it doesn't show up until later in life. Occasionally we see teenagers, but yes, it's mostly a disease of middle age. And it's really frustrating for people because they say, I used to be fine, and now I have this disease. Do they figure out that it is the aspirin or the ibuprofen that's causing it? Not always. And what we found is it can take years for people to figure out that this is the disease they have. Either they don't usually take ibuprofen or aspirin, or they don't make the association. I had a patient who thought he had an allergy to the bowling alley because he would only get stuffy and have an asthma attack when he went bowling. And then we figured out every time he went bowling, he would take ibuprofen beforehand. (laughs) So we figured that out. (laughs) Wait a second. What is the triad part of it? What makes it triad? It's those three things. They have asthma, they have polyps, and then they have that reaction. Okay. Those are the three. And how long after taking the aspirin, or and it can be an NSAID too, right? Right. And it can be Alka-Seltzer or other things that people don't realize have ibuprofen or aspirin in them, cold medicine. Um, And how long after they take it does, does this happen and what exactly minutes are the to hours really minutes to hours yeah they may just get stuffy or their eyes may run or they may have a runny nose but for some it can be a really severe asthma attack and they can end up in the emergency department it must take a long time or maybe not so much anymore if you were very excited to talk about this for people for medical professionals to figure out the patient's symptoms well since the reaction typically only happens if they take the medication if it's not something they take they may not know. Some healthcare providers aren't familiar with this, so they don't ask. We have a couple other clues. A lot of patients with this also react to beer and wine. So if they have a drink, they can get stuffy or they can have an asthma attack. Um, and we have some lab work that we can also do now to help diagnose it if people are looking for it. There used to be a, a test called an aspirin challenge, didn't there? Do that's you still the, use that? That's what we consider the gold standard. So the The way that we always tested or the way people used to test was give someone an aspirin and see what happens. (laughs) But that can be dangerous if your asthma is pretty bad. And most of these people have really severe asthma or really severe polyps. And for some of them, 
taking an aspirin may be potentially dangerous. So if we do that test, we do it at the hospital, we make sure their asthma is under good control, we do it in a controlled environment. That's still considered the gold standard. But now we have some tests that we can run that can help us make the diagnosis, although it's maybe not as good as the aspirin challenge. What, and what about the nasal polyps? Do you take those out? We do take them out. So there are a lot of people with nasal polyps. I guess not a lot, but in my practice there are. Sure. Um, in the U.S., maybe 4% of people have polyps, but less than 1% total have AERD. When we take out polyps in the operating room, it's so that people can breathe better and smell and their sinus symptoms are better. If we send them to the lab, the pathology lab, they may not be able to tell under a microscope if someone has sort of routine chronic sinusitis with polyps or this more severe aspirin exacerbated respiratory disease. So we have some other clues that we can use from blood work and urine tests that can help us. If you have someone with polyps and, and AERD, you take the polyps out and they avoid uh, aspirin, will the polyps not come back? Or no. Just, really? Yes, they will still have a recurrence of polyps. Typically, people with AERD have the worst polyps, so we'll take it out and they will grow back. And on average, these patients may have three, six, or more surgeries in their lifetime to take polyps out because they come back. The challenge is we have to find out who has this disease so we can put them on the right medication to slow the polyps down. And there's uh, just a medication will do that? It's a combination of things, and okay. sometimes finding the right combination is helpful. Now, it's frustrating because the polyps can still grow back despite being on nasal steroids or on certain oral medications that can help. And so we're trying to figure out who's going to respond to which, which medications and how to best control the disease. Now, is there a new drug that's just come out for There this was condition? a drug that was just approved by the FDA last month for nasal polyps. It's an injection that people can do at home under the skin every one to two weeks. It's called a biologic. And biologic is a big category of medications that are antibodies, um, but this medication has been shown to decrease polyp size and improve asthma. It's the first injectable medication we have specifically for polyps. It just came out last month. And do we know the cost? Or Right now, uh, I just looked it up. The approximate cost is $37,000 a year. Whew, that's a lot. Do you think that this will uh, reduce your workload? <laughs> well, that's a question, right? So that's very expensive, and we have to figure out who should have that injection versus the standard treatment right now, which is surgery. And then the other treatment which we do is called aspirin desensitization. This sounds counterintuitive, but yeah. if you give people with Samter's triad or AERD high doses of aspirin, which we do after we take out all the polyps and start out with a clean slate, high doses of aspirin, they are less likely to regrow their polyps. That doesn't make any sense. I know. I tell people it's not quite the same, but it's sort of like if you're allergic to cats and you get shots with cat okay. dander mm -hmm. antigen, you're not going to react. It's not quite the same, and we don't know exactly how it works, but you take two aspirin twice a day, which is a lot, but for some people they have a great response and they don't regrow their polyps, and that's certainly a lot cheaper than an injection you do every one to two weeks that costs 30000 dollars a year. You're taking out nasal polyps, do you do that under general anesthesia? I do in the operating room and we open up all the sinuses. We take the polyps out so that people Ooh, no, can wait get... a minute. You open up all the sinuses. How do you... Where the incision go? We go through the nostrils with a camera huh. and a little instrument called a micro debrider or little cutting instruments to take the polyps out and those thin little bones in the sinuses. We make the holes bigger and then people can use medication in the nose that will actually get into the sinuses now that everything's open. Dr. Erin O'Brien, she's Division Chair of Rhinology at Mayo Clinic in Rochester and an expert on Samter's Triad. Now you know what it is, aspirin exacerbated respiratory disease. More common than most of us knew, diagnosis can be difficult and often delayed, right? But there is treatment and potentially a new biologic drug that's uh, been approved by the FDA should be available soon, but it's not cheap. That's right. Dr. Erin O'Brien, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.